Welcome back to The Edge. Automatic confronts some irony on a new protest site. Google launches its November 2024 core algorithm update right before the holidays. And uh, how a Google breakup could impact the PPC industry. You're listening to News from The Edge for the week of November 11th, 2024, here on Edge of the Web Radio. From The Edge of the Web Studios, here's what we're looking at this week. Good day to you. This is Edge of the Web Radio. I'm your host, Aaron Sparks, owner of Site Strategics. We're a Indianapolis, Indiana-based digital marketing firm covering SEO and digital marketing news each and every week, separate from our interview series, and to be able to bring you as much information as we're seeing in the digital marketing industry as quickly as we can. Be sure to check out all the shows over at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. We've been doing this for over 13 years, and we keep on cranking the content out each and every week. So, title sponsor of the show is SiteStrategics. Proud to have SiteStrategics as a continued sponsor, title sponsor of Edge of the Web. Uh, we're one of the top SEO companies here in the Midwest. We are consummate learners, thus the uh, reason for this show. We uh, keep our powder dry and our sword sharp to be able to bring some fantastic marketing tactics to our clients. And you could be one of them. Uh, joining me on the show here is the regular creative studio director. The regular. Damn. Yeah. So, uh, so, wow. so, so, uh, man, I didn't even have super that. normal. I didn't have a, uh, a an adjective there. <laughs> well, you don't want to yeah. be irregular because that would be, yeah. that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, eat concerning. your fiber. <laughs> eat your fiber. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, how are you doing, Jake? Doing all right. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, got a little bit like start on the show this week, but we're, Plugging away, and there's a lot yep. of interesting news this week as well. Oh, yeah, we got good stuff. <laughs> All right, so first on the docket here, Automatic faces some irony on a new <sighs> protest website, WP Engine Tracker. So Automatic WP Engine's dispute takes a bit of an ironic turn with the publication of a protest site on the new WP Engine Tracker. So give me a little bit of background on this first and foremost here. What did Mullen, what Mullenweg actually launch here earlier? So Mullenweg launched a website called WordPress Engine Tracker, mm -hmm. which is funny, first of all, because it's WP Engine, not WordPress Engine. Right. But you and I were talking before the show. We think maybe he did that to protect himself. Legally. In case, yeah. yeah. Didn't wanna, but we're not sure. So it's called uh, WordPress Tracker. And I've got that site here. What this website does is he is supposedly tracking all the sites that are fleeing WP Engine. Oh, wow. So this is WordPressTracker.com. And this is his proof that everyone hates WP Engine. It's WordPress Engine Tracker. This is WordPress Engine Tracker.com. Right. So you got a. You got eighteen thousand plus sites that have left since September twenty four. Right. Uh, and but, it, yeah, immediately, ahead. my problem with this is there's no context at all. Like people join and leave hosts all the time. Sure. Like people stop paying their bills. People move to different things. Their businesses shut down and they cancel their websites. Mm -hmm. All kinds of things going on. We don't know if they lost eighteen thousand customers and gained twenty thousand. We don't know if these are normal numbers right. that would have happened anyway during this time period. There's no context at all for this. Well, it, the, the it domains seems... are still existing because they're moving as opposed sure. to just stopping, right? Well, allegedly, but I, <laughs> I mean, we don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he goes into it a little bit more, but like there's very little context for this. It's just a big number and it's a big number to us because none of us run 18,000 websites. But right. we also, that's the other thing is I don't know how many pages WP Engine hosts. If they host 18 million, 18,000 is not a big deal. Sure, sure. So it's but just, he's, he's trying to make a point. He's yeah, trying to, he's make, trying a to make a that, point that because of the challenge, the problems between Automatic, which is the parent company of WordPress, and WP Engine, which they made the challenge that they were not contributing to the degree that others are. And, and that's the whole kerfuffle there. There's He literally shut down access to the WordPress library of plugins and actually shut down the ability to even update plugins for a period of time here. So there's been a lot of kind of outspoken pushback on what Mullenwood was doing. And he also has canceled a huge amount of contri con uh, contributors in the Slack channels for, for WordPress as well. So that aside, this protest right. site crops up. Yeah. <laughs> this is hilarious. Here. Look at this. Look at this. And if, you, uh, if you're listening to it, go over to the YouTube channel or just go to this bloody site, WPEngineTracker.com. It's a blank white site. And the only thing it says is, Matt, 
please stop. Yep. Along with that, also, while I have your ear, stop bullying trans people. And that links to an link- article. February this is a Mashable article from February. Tumblr CEO public meltdown is mocked, mean by users. User accused Tumblr staff of transphobic moderation. And then he responded in his personal blog. So this is uh, some old, older news right. from some problems he had before. But So the uh, community, <laughs> I, we'd, I'd love to know who actually spun that thing up. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, there's still a, a, a huge outcry of what in the world is going on to cancel culture in, kind of inside of WordPress. There's a lot of... Yep. A lot of heartache because there was a lot of goodwill to supporting WordPress, and Mullenweg's just kind of burning through that. Well, you want to know who spun it up? Here it is. Who's that? Uh, JPRJR. Okay. <laughs> See, so I just bought it, so I guess it's off the table. <laughs> <laughs> so he registered it and announced it on GitHub. <laughs> so that was I uh, grabbed that article from Search Engine Journal by uh, Roger Monte. Google rolls out. The November 2024 <sighs> core update. Yes, there's a new core update in town, folks. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so they had a Google Search Console Twitter account announced that November 11th of this week on Monday. They released this, and they never actually tell you what core updates are about. But there's certainly a lot of social chatter about this, and we're all kind of watching sites to see if there's any effect here. These core updates really are nebulous. They don't make any type of specifics to what they're actually updating. But here's the thing. We actually called it on the show here several weeks ago that we all and Morty were actually uh, prognosticating that there was going to be another one coming up before the holidays. But here's the deal. This is mid-November. How long does a core update usually take? Well, we've seen just recently uh, long hauls. I think we had uh, the re- most recent one in September, uh, I'm sorry, August, roll out to I think maybe 40 days or something like that, 40, 48 days. But if that is an overlap onto this timeline, we're going to be running right into the holidays, right into Black Friday, right into Cyber Monday. And even uh, right after the posting, Barry said, this should complete before the big holiday shopping season. Should, quote unquote. So I don't know if he's actually ins- insisting that or he heard something along, <laughs> along the way. But um, all things being equal, what's really funny is the memes that are popping up. So here's one real quick. Cyber Shepherd, <laughs> his post was literally uh, just, oh, what's to say there? Uh, just checking sites to see how much they won in the Google Core update. And it's a big lottery ticket meme that's looping. Loser, loser, loser. It's a scratch off tickets. So. I'm just waiting. It's one of these has to be a winner. <laughs> Keep on watching. We'll sit here and watch. <laughs> we'll let you guys know. So as we hear and watch from different players that are in the field and actually showcasing some of the changes that are happening to these websites, we'll cer- certainly bring this up and share that with you uh, to give a little bit of a beat on what's happening from the core update. But my gosh, right before the holiday season, e-commerce sites must be just white knuckling it right now. And we've seen that before and during holidays, core updates actually rolling out and product review updates and the like. So Google doesn't care. Google does not care. All right. Hey, we are proud to have Site Strategics as the title sponsor of Edge of the Web, like I said in the beginning. Hey, here's a question for you. How do you create authoritative subject matter expertise that we know Google's looking for? They care about that. Learning from your client is always the place to start, but organizing a well thought through interview process is time consuming and daunting. So we've actually developed a SME, a subject matter expert interview process that's backed by our years of interview techniques as well as some SEO research and buyer's journey persona definitions. We pack all that together as a service for you or your clients. So if you're a marketing firm, marketing agency, we can kind of come in as a SME interview SWAT team to be able to help you out and extract some fantastic interviews to be able to learn from your client, be able to curate that content, and then you can actually use that into blog posts, transcripts, audio and video assets, all from your client's subject matter knowledge, their voice, their tone, and their passion. So if you're interested in what we can do for you, just give us a call at 877-SEO4WEB. Yes, I'm still using a toll-free number, but you can also go over to sitestrategics.com and just connect with us. Happy to talk to you about this process and some of the successes that we have had. All right, another article here from Search Engine Land by Sarah Steeman. 
how a Google breakup could actually change the PPC industry. Now, we know that the antitrust trial is still in process here for the ad tech side of things. The future of paid ads and paid search hangs in the balance, and this is what it actually means to PPC marketers. Great article. It's, again, prognosticating here. We don't know what's going to be happening, and we also don't know what's going to be happening with this new administration that's coming in as well. So everything's kind of on the table here. But the, the antitrust trial started earlier this year. Antitrust discussions threatened to be able to dismantle Google's dominant paid search ecosystem, a platform that has been the best option for paid ads for over a decade. And we've talked about it ad infinitum here on this. It has some incredible specialists talking about the, the Google search ad space here. Well, there's a number of people that believe that this could actually happen very, very quickly. Kurt Henninger believes that this could happen out of the blue. The dominance of a single platform, she says, has allowed advertisers to build expertise on one primary ecosystem, focusing on a unified set of tools and metrics. Now, we know there's a slew of different marketing platforms out here, but the paid search space that Google dominates, I mean, they have 80% of the, the market share, or 90%, I'm sorry, of global global search market share. And that's an incredible tool, uh, platform to be able to deliver on. So the integrated ecosystem allows advertisers to easily manage campaigns, track performance, and implement tracking pixels and what. So the problem here is that there's a lot of deep specialists inside of Google search ads, but I don't believe that that would be stopped at all and a, a new platform come into the void here. This will go someplace and it will, I mean, a breakup usually means that you've got splinter companies that actually own the same properties. So some positive implications of a breakup, she says, could be increased competition. It split could actually increase competition in various markets, potentially resulting in lower prices for advertisers and faster innovation. I think that's actually a very astute observation because in the DOJ leaked documents in the previous trial, there were some instances where we heard about the search ad space and the search and the Google search space debating back and forth and understanding that there were kind of putting a surcharge on utilizing the entire advertising ecosystem to the degree of 15% increase on top of what advertisers were spe spending. Well, there is a cost for utilizing somebody's ad placement service, but that was a little bit of a thumb on the scale there from revenue creation. And there was the debate of how to increase revenue by having more and more search ads and removing some of the search value out of the system, the actually organic search. Anyway, that said, Melissa Mackey actually re recalls a time when Yahoo surpassed Google in size. She also notes that although although neither matched the quality of Google ads, Yahoo had a substantial volume. I mean, this is all history here. You could very well see some platform-specific innovations if that breakup did occur and some fantastic opportunities to innovate. But here's the deal. The negative implications here are sizable, siloed data. Right, Google's integrated ecosystem allows for streamlined data collection from Google Analytics to Tag Manager. You could easily pull that data into Looker Studio as well. Advertisers, however, who bypass Google Analytics often have the ability and the availability of numerous tools for data integration. However, she says incorporating additional services and data integrators can lead to data loss and reliance on third-party tools as opposed to the tools inside the platform itself. So the cost of advertising are already high, especially in retail, where increased cost per clicks further squeeze margins. Fragmentation could further intensify those challenges, not only from the platform side, but also the labor side. And we talked about this as well. There's a deep specialist industry in paid ad management inside of Google Ads. Again, I don't think that's going to be going away, but for fragmentation and learning other platforms to a deeper, deeper degree, you're going to have some increased labor costs here. And I don't really know if that's actually the case. I think in the advertising marketing industry, you're going to have deep specialties in all of these platforms. So I think this is a little bit of a, a red herring, to be honest with you, what she was bringing up, because it's not going to change. Innovation certainly will change. But the core of what we're talking about, this ad platform is not going away. It may not be under Alphabet's ownership, but you better believe it's going to find a home someplace if it was broken up. So any thoughts that you have there as we went through the article, Jacob? Honestly, I feel like you said everything I was going to say. <laughs> That's right. We talked about it before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, and I highlighted as we were going through the article, I think the one that stuck out to me the most was definitely like, 
the idea that Google is so big and people kind of have that expertise on it that like the, the biggest thing about a breakup is the increased cost of having to train on lots of things and the increased cost of and the complexity of having to stay competitive of having to spread your time and your efforts across multiple things. But obviously that's a problem that affects everybody, right? right. So I think the core argument here is the integration of that data between Tag Manager Analytics and Google Ads. You have such a level of clarity. And I use that in quotes because Google Analytics 4 hasn't been as clear as other iterations of analytics. But that said, we also know that if there is any type of proposed breakup, this is going to take years in courts, appeal after appeal after appeal. So I don't see this thing happening very quickly if it is going to happen. So that's our, our two cents on that stage here. But I want to pivot around. Yes, it's, and, not, it's <laughs> this, time. It is time. It's time for Captain Obvious. <laughs> and, and you right. know, Go for it. So... <laughs> We took our family to Chicago this weekend. Yep. And we were at the Chicago Toy and Game Fair. Yep. And uh, they released a lot of new toys and new things, and we're looking around. And yep. While we were there, some news broke, and I everyone's heard this by this point. I'm positive. Everyone in the toy world and everyone in the marketing world and everyone that owns a TV has heard at this point, but it's still going to be a Captain Obvious moment. <laughs> because I want to cover it. Okay, go for it. This is all yours. Yeah, well, especially because like it is a big fear of mine. Every time I make graphics for this show, every time I do everything at all, I'm always petrified of spell check because Adobe doesn't really have great spell checking features. Right. This isn't really a spell check. This is just like proofreading. Proofread your stuff, guys, especially if you're Mattel. <laughs> all right? Yep. Listen. You guys, you've got to look at it, okay? And if you aren't aware of what I'm talking about, Mattel sent out some Barbie dolls promoting the movie Wicked, right? whose movie website is wickedmovie.com. Uh -huh. And if you don't put movie on there, it goes to a different website, which you should not be looking at at work if you <laughs> want to have a conversation with the HR department. This is not a website I will be looking at uh, and sharing on the screen right now because <laughs> this goes on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. I think I've said enough. Yeah, you really have. Uh, but, I mean, the ability for that to get printed on a package, because I feel like when we, when we, I mean, I'm sure things get slipped through every now and then. And sure. Like, broken links or something like that. But even then, I still try to click every link that we put out on our show pages and everything else. Just like proofread, click. I know you don't click on a package, but like that was in a digital format at one point in time. Did nobody click it? Did nobody try it? Was their firewall so great? Someone just thought like, oh, the site's not working right now. That's not our problem. It's not ours. So <laughs> they didn't realize it didn't work because because their, uh, well, their firewall is, was blocking it for is, different reasons. One thing is QCing any packaging material, making sure that everything is locked down. You certainly got to lock down the legalese oh on, the, on the, and the warnings and the labels and everything, but not checking that. Yeah. For a toy. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. What a complete and utter mess mm. there. So don't, not, know, don't uh, know how you can backtrack that. They better get those things off the shelf and, not, and repackage them. They're, they're already gone. They're already gone. Uh, I heard in, uh, let's see, this article that I was looking at here actually says that you, you might be able to find some of those on Amazon, not Amazon, uh, <laughs> eBay. For upwards of five hundred dollars. Oh my gosh! I bet it's going to be a, a a twisted bidding war there. Yeah. So yeah, if you go look it on on eBay right now, yeah, rare URL error misprint. Yeah, it's for as much as five hundred dollars. Wow. So yeah, if you still want one, <laughs> if you think it's going to be a collector's item one day, <laughs> one day, right now, collector's item right this minute, go looking. That's wow. that's my. Captain Obvious. Moment. That's amazing. That's, that's amazing. Insane. Alrighty. So <laughs> that said, uh, just an obvious moment. Retailers, check your crap, oh please. Oh, oi, oi, oi. All right. Uh, AI news, real quick. One quick AI news. This is from Search Engine Journal from Roger Monte as well. Hey, uh, the latest Google AIO, that's AI overview updates, may impact SEO. The updates to the Google AIO for shopping queries may impact e-commerce traffic as AIO expands and occupies more 
space. They are continuing updating the AI rankings, increasing the presence of larger shopping-related panels and ads that push organic search results lower on the page. He says the good news for the search marketers is that AIO volatility in shopping queries is stabilizing, and the rankings increasingly match matching sites typically ranked in organic search, the AIO, AIO rankings themselves. Arguably, he says, the most important change in this edition of advertising in AI overviews, which has the effect of pushing organic search results lower down. Now, we were waiting on ads starting to come through on AI overviews here. Citations of websites within AI overviews for general queries rose over 300% in August, with the biggest growth 200% experienced in September. So AIO, they're, they're stacking a lot in this AIO environment here. Advertising is going to be in there if you haven't seen it already. Shopping experience is, is wholly different on the SERP than it has been. And on top of that, that's happening right before the holidays as well. So e-commerce, anybody that's running this e an e-commerce site, sizable e-commerce site, you need to be understanding your rankings and understanding the shift. And there's a lot of really good rank trackers that can actually show AIO placement of your product or hopefully your shopping ad as well. So pay attention to the new real estate that's being offered by the aforementioned, <laughs> aforementioned Google search ads because you may very well be able to be included in that space. Would you shop Jacob, from an AIO an AI overview panel. I mean, yeah, probably. Yeah, I don't know why not. I mean, because once I get to the shop, as long as I'm familiar with the shop, I guess so. Right. I feel like most of my shopping's Amazon anyway. So yeah, yeah. If it's Amazon or another familiar retailer, yes. If it's something shady looking, no, but I'm already not shopping at those shady sites anyways. I don't know. I think Are you, so you're not shopping off the back of uh, toy boxes. Nope. Not <laughs> clicking that. Not at work at least. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. All right. So uh, watch carefully. And if you're not watching your ranks and the ranking tools, they do. A lot of them have these AIO placements on the SERP and SERP features. So check those out and see how your site's faring. All right, quickly to an AI tool for our listening audience here. You can get some visuals from your text. Now, Jacob pulled this one out as a good tool to talk about here. Napkin.ai turns your text into visuals so you can share your, art, your ideas quickly and effectively. So you can put anything into a uh, text field for Napkin, and it can actually turn it into Venn diagrams, workflows, brainstorming, node and cluster concepts there. So go over there. This is not a promoted thing. We were just kind of toying around with it. Looks kind of cool, right? So you can paste your text in there. You have to pretty much think through the text that you're actually putting together here. And then you can actually click to generate visuals. And it can give you a lot of different ways to actually visualize what you're talking about here. A picture is worth a, a thousand words, right? Don't paste a thousand words in there because that's going to be a hot mess. That's going to be a big picture. That's going to be a big picture. But, I mean, you can uh, prompt a timeline and be able to put a, a number of different visuals in place. And there's been a number of these type of visual tool sets out there, especially for presentations. But it looked interesting enough. Go give it a try and uh, let us know what you think there. What we do want you to check out is Enlinks. They are a continued sponsor of Edge of the Web. Did you know that entities play a major role in how search engines understand and rank content on the web. Long gone is the days of keyword optimization. It's a thing of the past. Now's the time to add entity into your content. You need to be able to create subject matter expertise and knowledge. You need to know what Google's looking for on your certain topics and be able to expand that inside your website and beyond. So Inlinks is an award-winning software in entity SEO. They got some fantastic tools inside that incredible anchor text interlinking tool that we use at the shop. We also utilize it for creating content briefs where we can look at competitive analysis and be able to see the gaps of, of structure that we may be experiencing as it applies to the top 10, top 20 sites that we're trying to compete with. So some fantastic AI functionality. They have a fantastic social media calendar scheduling service where you can actually curate from your own content 
an entire social media calendar. So go over to edgeofthewebradio.com forward slash and links today to claim your free and links account and start creating content that will outperform your competitors. Last but not least here, and then we're out of here is Barry Blast. All right, Barry Blass from Search Engine Roundtable. Google ads allow U.S. election ads to start again today. You're, you're still losing, by the way. <laughs> so I just thought I'd put that out to you. Thank you. I wanted to check in on that first. Okay, now to Barry Blass. <laughs> Not one of them was a winner, huh? Still no. Okay. Just a quick check in. <laughs> November 11th, Barry posted this that uh, has lifted the pause on U.S. election and political ads today. Monday, no uh, November 11th, 2024, the pause on U.S. based ads. Election ads was temporarily instituted after the U.S. election polls closed on Tuesday, November 5th. Google's now lifted that temporary pause, and you can begin those ads again if you want to. Who the heck wants to? I still don't understand this. What am I missing? What, are, what ads are left? Are these, is this like... <laughs> Oh, there's plenty of ads. County dog catcher, or is this, <laughs> or are these ads that are somehow flagged as being political? Um, or? I'm thinking a lot of display ads and a lot of the, and, and native advertising. I'm still seeing a lot of crap inside of Twitter, different platform, obviously. Still a bunch of political ads on both sides of the aisle. It's is it for it's, it's other. For, it's, it's for gotcha moments, but it's not actually. I still okay. see uh, what I'm seeing is all the people that have forgotten that they're running ads. They need to turn them off. Okay. Oi, oi, oi. Anyway, right. uh, it's, it's just weird to like, yeah, I, I didn't understand why we had to pause them in the first place because I didn't understand who was still running them. But yeah, OK, doesn't make that much sense. Well, I'm glad they're willing to still take money. Fantastic. <laughs> Another one. Hey, check this out. Uh, Haro, the Haro platform, help a reporter out. The connectivity platform is closing down December 7th. If you're not familiar with that, that was December 9th. Oh, December 9th. I'm okay. sorry. Get two extra days. If you're not familiar with the platform, that was a great tool in its day to be able to see what reporters were looking for, subject matter specialists that you could actually get quoted on an article that they were writing, be able to contribute, and get a backlink. That was the entire goal there. Well, that system's shutting down. You know, Help a Reporter Out was an online service for journalists to obtain feedback from the public and enable journalists to connect with experts on issues relevant to their reporting. It was founded in 2008 as a Facebook group and turned into a mailing list for journalists and bloggers in 2010. It was acquired by Vocus, and then in 2014, Cision merged with Vocus. So... They're going to be closing it down. The company posted a big FAQ. Well, uh, you can link to the article and see what's going on there. There was some speculation that Google was going to be going after Haro Links somehow. That was in 2014. But that said, it was a very useful tool, but there's got to be better platforms now to be able to connect with journalists. So that said, I mean, there is Journal Finder that Barry linked at the bottom of his article. Plenty of, plenty of tools to be able to find things like sources of sources and the like. So... Check that out, uh, and uh, we'll just uh, do an RI, uh, RIP for. And you know what? The functionality was such that I could not turn off my alerts, even if I disengaged from that and shut down my campaigns. I kept on getting horror alerts for the longest time in my email. It you, just you could you went not. on December tenth. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> anyway. So Google's testing, we talked about AI overviews uh, just earlier. Google's testing showing real blue anchor text-based hyperlinks in the AIOs instead of showing a paperclip icon. I appreciate that because those paperclip icons really didn't give any type of branding for the citation links to the domains. It's going to encourage searchers to actually click on the links within the AI overviews more, or maybe not, he says. I have no data to validate that because Google won't give it to us. <laughs> So AIO is still changing so much, and Barry is regularly watching these changes, these machinations inside of AIO. You need to be aware of what's happening in that. I think this is the most volatile, outside of core algorithm updates and what have you, this is the most volatile area of the SERP that can win for you or can lose for you. Uh, you've got to be paying attention to your rankings inside that and seeing what's actually happening. If you do get some additional traffic coming through, you really want to be able to try to capitalize on that. And by the way, Barry was on our recent show. I'll let you know, we had a great show talking to the people over at Third Door Media, talking about the 
acquisition of search engine land by SEMrush. And it was great to be able to have Danny Goodwin, Mark Serkin, as well as Barry Swartz on the show talking about their insight on the matter, uh, their focus on editorial integrity and independence. And please check that out. That's episode 725. We just dropped a day ago. So go check out that show. We were really blessed to be able to have that group of professionals jumping in there. And that's the top brass over at Third Door. Yep. You can see that show in its entirety on YouTube as well. That's right. That's right. And that's worth it just for the ending. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> But watch the whole thing. Watch like, the whole don't, thing. Don't skip to the ending, but it's worth it for the ending. I'll make sure I'm saying that right. We love you, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it for The Edge this week. Thanks for listening here. Make sure you check out that show. If you like what you see, go over to uh, your review platform of choice for podcasts. Leave us a five-star review if you could. We really appreciate it. Also, check out the YouTube channel as we're going to be putting a number of aha moments from that previous show here on the channel. From all of us over at Edge, stay safe, stay well, and do not be a piece of cyber driftwood. Bye-bye.